What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I finally received the rebuild kit for the Kohler K341 AQS. So let's finally put this together. So back on the white table, this is where I'll be assembling the Kohler K341. Over to my right, I have the piston and I have a full gasket kit as well as a brand new carburetor. On my left, I have a couple products which I always use for all my rebuilds. Um, I'll give you guys a glimpse of that. And then I have some measuring tools because we'll have to do some measuring just to make sure everything is looking good on this engine. Over on the other table behind you guys, I have a couple other parts laid out. Uh, those are mainly panels and some other things that I'll have to add later on. But now we'll focus on the engine block and we'll start with the governor right away. Right in front of me is the governor assembly. We have the governor linkage. We have the spacer. We have the threaded nut. And we have a support bolt as well as the governor right here. This I happened to clean up and now everything moves freely and the gear is in perfect condition. So the way we're going to assemble this is we're going to put the governor shaft in first. We're going to add the spacer after that and then we will add our nut. Once this is in and in place, we can then add our governor gear as well as the supporting bolt which holds the governor gear in place. The first thing I'm going to add is the governor shaft right here. The longer side goes outward and the shorter side goes that way. I'm going to add assembly grease on everything here. So I'm going to grab a blob of assembly grease and put on the shaft down there. Just like that. And that's how it should move up and down. Next up, I'm going to grab the spacer and the spacer will get pushed on from outside like so. thing I'll focus on is the camshaft, the camshaft rod. This follows through the camshaft and holds it in place within the block. And then we have one more shim. This shim will act as your end play um, to make it up, I suppose. And we have the fuller gauge right here so we can measure our end play after this is installed. I will just install it dry to measure the end play. Uh, hopefully I don't have to put in another shim. I believe this is sufficient enough, but we'll see. I do have a link down in the description on all the torque specs and measurements that this engine should have. So if you guys are interested in this or going to rebuild your own engine, click that link down below to view all those specs. So let me install the camshaft and then I'll follow through with the rod. Now I'm going to insert the shim. It will be on the top end or opposite of the gear. And now I can add the rod. So the best way to test the camshaft will be to pull it up and down right here, just pull it up and down, and you'll hear that right there is the end plate. On the opposite side where the shim is located, I'm going to grab the feeler gauge right here. 
This is 0.7 and 0.8 or 7 tau and 8 tau. According to the manual, the camshaft end plate should be somewhere between 5 thousandths of an inch and 10 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I'll check with the fuel gauge and see what we have. But either way, I'm going to share with you guys how I put in the 7 tau right here. That goes in very smooth right in between there. And the 8 thou now, just hardly, it's just too tight. So I know that 7 thou is great and 8 is just not enough. I just measured the camshaft end plate and everything seems to be fine. I looped it up, but before I put in the camshaft, I have to go over here and add the valve lifters. This is the exhaust valve lifter and this is the intake. These will get inserted into these two bores right here. So I'll lube these up before I put in the cam or else I'll have to take out the cam. So let's add these and then we'll put in the camshaft. some measuring tools in front of me here and next up I'll be installing the crankshaft for that I will have to measure the end plate and I do have a magnet stand as well as a gauge so I can measure the end plate over here I have a vernier so I can measure the thickness of the gaskets there is one thicker gasket within the rebuild kit from iSafe tractors this one happens to be 31 thousandths of an inch and then we have three that are all the same and these right here are nine thousandths of an inch so what I'll be doing next is installing the crankshaft dry I have to feed it through the block and then I have to grab the end plate and the end plate has this area over here where the gasket will sit the gaskets are cut out very good so I don't have to do any modification there so I will start off with the thickest gasket, 31 thousandths of an inch, and then I can go from here if I have to add more or if I have to make something thinner out of these three over here. I'll put it in and I'll measure the end plate and I'll share with you guys a close-up view on this. I have the engine block in front of me. This is the side where the dipstick is as well as the starter. On this side, we have our flywheel and on this side, we have our PTO clutch eventually. This over here is the plate which I mentioned. It will be mounted on this way. It holds one of the bearings for the crankshaft and the other bearing is already in place. I never took that out. So our crankshaft will be mounted like so. We have the end which holds the PTO and the other end over here with this key which will hold the flywheel. So once I insert this, I did add just a little bit of oil onto the bearing surface right here, as well as on this side. So now I will insert it into the first bearing, which is here. And then I can add the plate, which will hold the crankshaft on the bearing right here. Then adding the shim.
you guys my setup. So the crankshaft is sticking out this far. I have the gauge on the milled surface and the magnet stand is hooked up to the engine block. So everything is set. Now we'll go ahead onto the other side and I will grab my plastic hammer right here and I will tap it and I will make sure that that's at zero and I'll see how much the end play is. There is a slight reading. The needle seems to be in between. So that's about half a thou right there. And now I'll check if that's correct. With the thickest gasket here, I did not have enough end play. So I will add this nine thou shim on top of it. And then we'll go ahead and test it once more. So I have it set up here once more. The gauge is reading zero on the end of the PTO. I'm gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna push this in and go to this side. And you guys can see it just moved to four thou right there. I'm gonna stay on this side. So if that's four thou, I just want it to go back. I'm gonna push on this side again. And it should go to zero right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Zero. Okay. So I managed to get the crankshaft end play within spec. I'll leave a link down in the description so you guys can view all the torque specs and settings on this engine yourself. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and push in the seals on the engine block and on the cover. If you like the content you're seeing, hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. So let's get back to the video. I'm back from the arbor press and I pushed in the seal which is on the engine block. It is not flush, it is recessed by just a shade. And now on the housing over here, I made sure that the double lip seal is about halfway in there. And I made sure that all the way around, it is consistent in the depth. Now what I can do is turn this around. I will grease up this bearing here, the bearing inside the housing. And I'll make sure that the crankshaft is looped up before we put it in. After that, I can make sure that these two gaskets or the gasket and the shim have RTV sealant around the perimeter in between both and also up against the engine block. Next up, I will be installing the piston, connecting rod, wrist pin, and the piston rings. The first thing I did was check the piston ring gap inside of the bore. The standard or the new bore piston ring gap will have to be 10 to 20 thou. And since this is a used block, I put them all in and these haven't been cut down to any measurement and these measure 22 thousandths of an inch, all of them right here. So I know that all these piston rings, the way they are, are perfectly within the spec of a used bore. Now the standard piston has two rings on the top and then we have the oil ring. iSafe Tractors gives you a nice detailed view on how to install them. They have three different styles here and I believe the style that we're going for today is the style number one. The first compression ring is of the shape right here. And I hope you guys can, uh, I hope this will focus so you guys can see that right there. It has the bevel towards the top left and that's indicated right here. So this right here will be my first compression ring. The second ring is the scraper ring. And I hope this will focus as well. We have a step right there on the bottom right. And then on the top right, we have another 45 degree bevel as well. That is very minimal. 
but according to this chart right here, it is style one. The step will be on the bottom right and the top right will have material. So this right here will be our second ring. After that, we're gonna go to the oil ring and we have three, one very thin one, which goes at the very bottom. We have the second piece, which is between, and then one more on top, and this will get sandwiched together in this formation right here. And what I did, I checked the ring gap on these as well, and everything seems to be perfect. So I will be installing these rings onto the piston right away. After the rings are on, I can go ahead and connect the piston with the wrist pin onto the connecting rod. Now, one more thing to point out is this notch right here on the piston and on the connecting rod, the indicator which side will be to the flywheel. So when we look at the piston, this notch right here has to be towards the flywheel and that will be on our left. Now to connect the piston with the connecting rod, we will be installing it this way. I believe there are a couple different variations of connecting rods right here, but this indicator right here will go towards this cutout and towards the flywheel as well. I believe there are two other markings down here. And when I took it apart, I made a mark myself right here just to be sure. So when you take something apart, it's always good to, to mark something or even on the piston, uh, mark which side the flywheel is on or even the PTO, it doesn't matter, but whichever side you take it out, that's the way it should get put back in. And if you have any new parts, you gotta make sure that those are put in the correct way as well. So let me get these piston rings on and let's assemble all this into the block. Before I install any piston rings onto the piston, I wanna make sure that the piston is clean and there's no debris on it for machining whatsoever. The next thing is to check all the surfaces that will be touching the cylinder wall, which are on this surface right here. I did notice that there is a chamfer on these sides right here, but when I go and touch them with my fingernail and I pull down, I notice there's a little, little burr, and I do not like that specifically. So what I will do, I will just grab a P400 emery cloth and I'm just gonna rub it back and forth just a little bit to uh, shave off that burr a little bit, and then that won't land into my engine. And just like that, it doesn't take much, but the burr isn't there anymore. And uh, that might save the engine from a little disaster. Right here, I'm going with my fingernail back and forth and I don't notice any burr, but I will double check every little bit of this piston because it did just come out of the CNC somewhere. And if they don't take the burr off by a machine and they do it by hand, then there is always a high spot on the edge. Everything seems to be okay. I just wanna take these burrs off. So just like that, I'm really happy with the piston. And now I can go ahead and install the piston rings. For that, I'll use this oil right here. This is a 5W30. I use 5W30 most of the time just to uh, get engines broken in. After that, I uh, specifically use a different oil. So for this, I'm gonna add oil on the bottom oil ring right here. And make sure that goes all the way around. You always wanna make sure that all the parts are looped up when you put them together. Fast forward over here to the piston rings. My camera just stopped before and now I already have this together. So the connecting rod is attached to the piston. I made sure that the marking is towards the correct side of the piston right here. And now I am ready to install this into the cylinder block. I will be using the piston spring compressor tool right here. On this tool, it's very nice. You have two sides. One is just straight. And the other side, which you want to face towards the block, has these little notches right here. And that should be flush up against the block like so. So wherever the notches are, are facing the cylinder 
and I will be compressing these piston rings right here, making sure that they are 120 degrees apart. After that's all done, I'm going to lube everything up within the cylinder wall really, really well, and I will pop in this piston right here. are mounted within the engine I can go ahead and mount the oil pan as well as the camshaft gear cover for that we also have gaskets and these came in the kit from iSafe tractors I will be using a thin layer of grease on both sides of the gaskets just to make sure it adheres much better I do not put grease inside of the engine but I will put it on the mating surface of the gasket Next up, I have the parts laid out which I would like to install. This right here is the exhaust manifold and this is the intake manifold. The valves have already been ground to perfection. As you can see, the valve seat is in perfect condition. Now I can go ahead and make sure that the valves will be installed properly. After they are installed, I will adjust the valve lifters so we have the correct gap which will allow the valve to open at the correct height. In front of me, I have the valve and the valve assembly. We have the spring retainer on the top, the spring and the keeper seat and the two keepers which hold this whole assembly together. I will be installing the exhaust first and then I will move on to the intake. Everything will be installed in this area right here. So I'll try my best to share with you guys how I do it. I do not have the correct tool to install the springs, but I'll give you guys a glimpse on how I do this. Just like that, the spring has to get pushed in, so you will need to lift it up. Once that's in, I will grab the keeper seat and I'll add this underneath of the spring. So 
So my trick for the valve springs, since I do not have the tool which will compress the valve spring, my trick is to grab two similar nuts. They have to be the exact same height. And my goal is to push the valve spring up. And once it's at a certain height, I will insert these two nuts left and right. And that will give me enough room around the valve itself to insert both keepers. So let's see if I can share with you guys this process. In the valve lifter, I'm going to turn the engine over so the valve compresses or the valve spring compresses at the highest point. So right here, it's at the highest point. Now what I can do is grab the two nuts that I had before and I will place them underneath. You might need to grab a screwdriver or something just to lift it a shade more. Something like that. Now it's underneath the nut. And this nut right here happens to be a little bit too big. We'll add a little bit smaller spring, a uh, nut, sorry, excuse me, on the other side right here. Like so. And hopefully that will work. So on the right side, I have a nut which is a little bit bigger. On the left, I have a narrow nut, which has a screwdriver on top. This spring is perfectly horizontal, and I added the first keeper over there. Now I'll go ahead and mount, install the second keeper. I'm going to turn the first one around the valve, put it in place, grab some needle nose pliers so that I don't lose it, push it in there, making sure that both of them are still on. And now what I'm going to do is rotate the engine so that the valve lifter pushes the keepers up and in. Now I can remove everything right here, like so. And once I go down, that should be in place. That's how it should look like. The keepers are holding the valve in place and the spring is pushing up against it. That wasn't the nicest thing to show you guys how I install the valves and the valve springs. But I hope you guys get an idea of how to do it. You just have to figure out a way to compress those valves and insert those keepers. They have to be seated properly because there are only two positions they can go in. They're each 180 degrees, so you want to make sure that those are seated properly. And once the spring is decompressed, it should hold the valve in place. Now I can move on and adjust the valve lifters to the valves. The valves and the valve springs are in place. Now I can move along and adjust the valve lifter, which is right here. We need a gap in between the exhaust and we need a gap in between the intake. The intake gap is between eight and 10 thousandths of an inch. And the gap on the exhaust has to be between 17 and 19 thousandths of an inch. To adjust the valve gap, I will take a 7 16 wrench, a half inch wrench, and my filler gauge. Valve lifter gap, you wanna make sure that you have the engine at top dead center, and the lifters should be at the very bottom. Once that's done, we will have a gap in between the valve and the valve lifter. We can take our feeler gauge and start on the intake or exhaust, it doesn't matter. In this case, I already measured the intake before and the 10 thousandths of an inch fits right through the intake. But 10 thousandths of an inch on the intake manifold is our max setting. So we will have to make sure that that setting pushes up onto the valve a little bit closer. To adjust it, and what I want to do is make sure that the valve lifter will be threaded outward. So for that, I'm going to grab my 7 16 and I'm going to turn in a counterclockwise rotation. I have 8 thou and 10 thou right in front of me. 8 is the minimum, 10 should be the max. 8 goes in super smooth. And now with 10 thou on the intake, 
it's too much. So that tells me I have at least 9,000 and that's perfectly within the spec. Now I'll move on to the exhaust, which is between 17 and 19. In front of me, I have the parts laid out, which will go onto the breather. This will get assembled in this area over the valves and valve lifters. We have the main plate. We have a cover, two gaskets. I will be using grease and applying it around the gasket surface. I believe it bonds much better and it's easier to use than ATV sealant. It doesn't leave a mess. Down here, we have two plates. We have a little spacer, which is made out of rubber. And we have a mesh, which will hold the oil inside of the engine. After that, everything gets held by this one nut and it will be tightened against this stud. So without further ado, let me install all of this. So for the fuel pump, this has been rebuilt. The gasket kit provides two different gaskets right here. I will prefer the paper gasket, but maybe some of you have a newer model of fuel pump, which will use this rubber gasket. But for me, I will be using the paper gasket. One thing to note, these bolts go into the housing all the way in. And since there will be oil splashing around there, I will add a little bead of UTV sealant all around this bolt. I added a whole bunch of parts to this side of the engine. Now I'll move on to the top. I'll be adding the head gasket and the cylinder head. So let's dig into it. I recently cleaned up the cylinder head and the surface is very smooth. So everything over here is very good. We have nine bolts for the cylinder head and one very special one. The special one will be mounted on the top left corner and this will be a stud, an exposed stud for another accessory which is above the engine. The condition of the head gasket is great. So we'll open this up, make sure that both surfaces on the cylinder head and on the block are in pristine condition. an engine. Next up I'll be mounting the dipstick housing. For that I have a gasket as well. After that I will be moving on to the front end where the flywheel is. The stator is underneath the flywheel. Once that's in place we can move on and tighten up the flywheel. As I mentioned before, I will be working on this side where the stator is located. In front of me on the table, I have the stator. From the stator, we have two wires. These two wires get hooked up to this connector. One of the wires goes into the 
right and the other one goes into the left channel of this connector. This connector then mounts to the voltage regulator and the middle connector is this right here, which leads to another connector. This is a small little bit of wiring harness. Uh, I will be mounting this with the stator onto the engine, but the voltage regulator will be put onto the engine cover, which covers the flywheel. In this case, I will be mounting the stator first. After that, I will be mounting this wire. So I'll share with you guys how to mount everything here and to make sure that your wires are correct. The first thing I will install is the stator. I did check if this is a working stator and it sure is. On the two wires that are leading out, we have this bracket which hooks up to this plate. The wires get fed to the right side of the engine or the right side which has the starter and the dipstick. I will be threading these two wires into this hole just like this. The stator has four bolts and it will mount to this plate. The bracket mounts right here. These four bolts are Phillips and the top one is a hex. This is a quarter inch bolt. All these bolts will be behind the flywheel and I do not want anything coming loose. So I will back it up with a thread Loctite and this is very easy to remove. So there's nothing too serious. The two wires are leading out to the right of the engine. So everything seems correct. I will be mounting this with the bolts. On these two wires right here, we have the connector. These two wires will go on the left and on the right. So to insert these, we got to take a small flat head screwdriver here. If we lift this up, and the other one as well, like so, we can insert them. One will go on the right and click in. Once it's clicked in, you know it's secured and the other one will click on the left. Make sure that these do not come out as they need the proper contact to the voltage regulator. Next up, I will install the flywheel. This is the nut which holds the flywheel in place. And I have a key which fits in this keyway. I have to make sure that this keyway is sitting properly up front and that the flywheel will get inserted properly on the key as well. So let's get this done. And once the flywheel is on, I'll give it a light tap so I know it's on there. After that, I can torque down the nut.
To tighten the flywheel nut, I have the torque wrench set to 55 foot-pounds of torque with a 15 16 socket, and now I'll tighten this down. Moving on forward, the last bit of wiring will be the points. The points are right here. We have four bolts, two hold this and two hold the cover. We have a gasket which came in the gasket kit and we have this rod which goes all the way through this bore onto the camshaft and this will activate your points. You wanna make sure that this is not mushroomed or damaged in any way and you wanna make sure that the diameter is very smooth and that there's no bumps here or wear. This is very important and you want to make sure before you install anything here that your points are clean. Your points are right here and you have your wire. You want to make sure your wire is making contact from the beginning to the end. This will hook up to the negative side of your condenser. So without further ado, let me install this and I'll share with you guys how everything works and how we'll set this up. The first thing I'll do is insert this rod I will add assembly grease down into this bore, like so. And I wanna make sure that this right here is lubricated. That's very important that this will move freely within this bore. Once this slides in, you wanna make sure that it's very, very easy to move in and out. And once it's down on the camshaft, you can turn over the engine and feel how this moves in and out after a couple of revolutions. The next thing I'll grab are the points. This whole assembly bolts on with two bolts, top and bottom. The bolts will get inserted here and here. So I'm going to tighten down these bolts here. Everything seems to be in line. You don't want to overdo them because you don't want to strip anything. They do have lock washers, so nothing to worry about. There is a flathead screw here on the side, which you can loosen up. That will give you movement on your points. This will adjust everything. So if I turn the engine over with the flywheel, like so, this will move in and out. So I will tighten it over here, just like that. I just have to focus on this here. Right there, the points are in an open position. This might be a, a better angle. Like that. And now, it'll close right there. So those are your points, now it has closed. So now the big issue on the points or what doesn't make them very reliable is these points are made out of metal. They can corrode any time. Over a certain period of time, they will corrode. So you're gonna have to clean them up. Now what we're gonna do today is find that high spot right there. And when it's open like this, we can adjust it with this flat head, the black one on the side. We will adjust this to the proper thickness. I will get my filler gauge and we'll adjust it to the proper spec. The points are open right now. I can adjust that. The manual calls for 18 to 20 thousandths of an inch gap on the points. Uh, I would like it to be as small as possible. So I will choose 18 as my reference. If I need any fine adjustment, I can do that later on, but I will choose 18 for now. I'll grab my flathead screwdriver. After I insert the filler gauge, I will open up the bolt. And now everything right here is loose. I will push everything against the rod that goes onto the camshaft. And I will tighten this up right here. I want to make sure everything stays together and I believe it should be okay. I will try and tighten it once more. 
Okay, now I'm happy with that. I will turn the engine over once more and then we'll check it. Right there, one revolution, 18 thousandths. And that seems very nice. I'll keep it at that. If I have any fine adjustment to do, I'll come back later. I had to charge up my camera and I didn't notice it cut out on the points. The points are adjusted and the cover is in place. In the meantime, I made some panels ready on this table, which I'll be mounting. After that's installed, I can then move on to the carburetor. This carburetor is brand new from iSafe Tractors. I think it's a very good quality carburetor and I'll be mounting all the linkages around the carburetor. But in the meantime, let's get to the panels. On this side of the engine where the fuel pump is, I will be mounting the brand new carburetor. The gasket kit came with this little sandwiched gasket. Uh, there is a little piece of plastic in between. This acts like a spacer, probably that the fuel flows a little bit better and the, there's not too much heat up against the carburetor. So I added some grease around the gasket on one side. I'll add a, another bit of grease on the other side and then I can mount the carburetor. It's getting late on me here and there's only two last things I have to mount onto this engine and I'll show you what. In front of me I have the ignition coil and the condenser. Both tested very well. The only thing I have to upgrade or buy new will be the cable from the ignition coil to the spark plug. Um, it's totally busted up and I don't think I can uh, rebuild this or retrieve it so I'm gonna have to buy something new. This Ignition coil will mount on the side of the starter and dipstick. I already mentioned it got pretty late on me here, but that's totally fine because the Kohler K341 AQS is assembled. I still have some minor touch-ups to do and I will get everything sorted out. Once everything is sorted out, I'll share with you guys in the upcoming video. I really want the throttle and the choke cables and the linkages to work perfectly after that, I can go around the ignition coil and hook up all the wires. Once that's done, I will hook it up to the brackets, which then mount into the John Deere. But I won't hook it up into the John Deere just yet. I'm gonna put it on a test stand outside and make sure everything is running and working just fine. So if you like this video, please smash that like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I noticed a bunch of you aren't subscribed to my channel and I'd really like to take you along on upcoming projects that I have here in the near future. So without further ado, stick around to the next video.